Hey booktube, it's Angie from Angie Rose Nomad. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing the books that influenced me when I was a wee little girl as a young, young reader. So let's jump right into this video. The first book we're going to be talking about is The Boxcar Children. I specifically remember the first book, which followed four siblings, Henry, Jesse, Violet, and Benny, and they were orphan children, and they lived in a boxcar in the forest until their grandfather came and, you know, rescued them and invited them to live with him, which they did. But it was just a great, great book slash series. There are so many of these books out right now. And I tried to find them at the local library, but I couldn't find the first one. And I was being really picky because I was very nostal nostalgic about my boxcar children. So I wanted book one to show you guys. I couldn't find it. So we're going to move right along to the next book that really influenced me. And that is The Babysitter's Club. This is by Anne Martin. And <clears throat> I remember really getting into the mysteries that they did. But this is the original first book. So this book actually follows four friends, Christy, Marianne, Claudia, and Stacy. And Christy has this great idea to start a babysitting club in their town of Stony Brook, Connecticut, I believe. So it just goes through, you know, their trials and tribulations. And each book is told through the perspective of who's ever book it is. So like this would be Christy's perspective. It's told in first person. I believe um, of course I flipped to a page yeah first person so like I said I was really uh, invested in the mystery side of it but I did read the original series as well and really enjoyed them the next book series that I really got into is the Encyclopedia Brown book series this is the first one Encyclopedia Brown boy detective and it follows this boy named Leroy aka Encyclopedia Brown and he is 10 years old and he is this kind of whiz kid in his town of Idaville where he's very good at trivia but he's also likes to put his skills at observing things to the test and kind of has his own detective agency. His dad is also the chief of police in this town and so every night around the dinner table his dad talks about his cases and Encyclopedia helps him solve his most baffling cases. Sounds probable, right? I ate this series up as a kid. And the thing I really, really love about this is in this book, there are several different mysteries in it. Um, but at the end of each little mystery, it has like, what was the proof? Okay, so we're gonna, you know, there's a proof of something, so we have to figure it out. And then at the back of the book, it gives the solutions to what the, what the mystery was, what the right answer was for everything. So you can try and work it out on your own. And if you get stumped, you can always come to the back of the book here and see the answer. So I really, really enjoyed this series a lot. Next up, we have a Nancy Drew book. This is book six, The Secret of Redgate Farm by Carolyn Keene. I loved Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys when I was a kid. I just I really had a, a knack for mystery books. And this just follows Nancy Drew solving some mysteries. Um, her best friends, Bess and I want to say it's George, are usually in these books as well as her boyfriend Ned, her dad, and their housekeeper. I can't remember her name for the life of me, but she always makes like the best treats or whatever. But in each book, Nancy has to solve a mystery with the help of her friends. Kind of the same line as the Hardy Boys series. This was more geared toward girls and the Hardy Boys was for boys. Obviously, they're about two uh, brothers in that series. I love them both. And Nancy and the Hardy Boys are friends, so sometimes they would cross over into each other's books. Okay, so then we have the Sweet Valley High series. This is kind of just like a soap opera that follows, you know, a group of friends. I was more interested in the mystery ones that they put out of those as well. Similar to the Babysitter's Club, they had a little mystery spin-off series. I love those. I ate those up. Um, but this follows actually, I think they're twins, Jessica and Elizabeth Wakefield. And they live in a town called Sweet Valley, California, and just their adventure really. It's more more suburban 
soap opera, I guess would be the name for it. But yeah, they were, they were pretty good books and I was really invested until I wasn't anymore. Next up is a book that I mentioned in a previous video and that is The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. This was the first book that we had to read as a class and we each got our own copies and I really, really love this game. This game, I love this book, but it is a game inside the book. So if you haven't heard me talk about this before, basically what happens is that this guy named Samuel Westing has died and he is the it person in town. He was the it person. He controlled much of the town and had just loads and loads of money. So when he, before he dies, I think it's before he dies, several people get an invitation to come check out this apartment building and they have a cafe and a dentist shop on the bottom floor and a restaurant on the top floor. And all these residents that were invited to come check out this apartment building were the only ones chosen to check out this apartment building and it was already predetermined that they would live there basically. And so when Samuel dies, all the people in the tower have um, a chance to win his will basically and all the money that he has made. But they're paired up and while you know, brothers think that they'll be paired up together and families think that they'll typically stay together, that's not the case at all. Uh, before he died, he had a condition that he wanted to lay out the pairs and who would be paired with who. So they had to figure out this mystery to in order to get the inheritance. And yeah, it's just a really, really great book. Really recommend this one. I have here this series that was written by multiple different authors, but it is such a great series, especially if you are a young reader and are looking to know more about America and the things that are going on and can really get on a level where you can understand the characters you're reading. And it is the Dear America series. So the first book I have here is My Heart is on the Ground. This is the diary of Nanny Little Rose, a Sioux girl. And it says Carlisle Indian School, Pennsylvania, 1880. So this follows the story of Nanny Little Rose who has been sent to this school in Pennsylvania where they are basically being forced to turn into good little white children. Um, it says on the back that, you know, she has to write her new name on the board and she tells her teacher, I already have a name. And the teacher said, you know, it's too hard to pronounce and it's a Sioux name. So you're going to assume the identity of this white person and just basically her story. The next one I have is called So Far From Home. This is the diary of Mary Driscoll, an Irish mill girl and it takes place in Lowell, Massachusetts in 1847. And this just follows her story of being an immigrant to America and working in the mill. So I read so many books out of this series when I was younger. I definitely read these two and enjoyed them greatly. Another one that I really recommend is the one about the Titanic. And I believe I really like the Oregon Trail one as well. The next two books that I have should be no surprise to anyone. And they are very, very near and dear to my heart. And it is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, both by J.K. Rowling. I just, I, I fell in love with Harry. So I had actually gotten this first book for a friend's birthday party. And I was sitting in the back of my grandfather's truck with my dad and my grandfather. We were coming back from Costco and I couldn't resist cracking it open. I had to know, you know, what was going on in this book. And then the more I read, the more I fell in love with Harry and knew that our journey was just beginning and I almost didn't want to give her the book. I did though, I got my own copy. These two out of my whole Harry Potter series collection because it is quite extensive. Um, yeah, I really love the series and I really love collecting it, but these two are my most prized because they actually came from my grandfather and he found them at a flea market that he went to and they are actually inscribed to someone named Jake Rook, Christmas 2001. But he gave them to me and he has since passed, but I will always treasure these because it's like a way to hold on to my grandpa. So yeah. So if you guys could not tell, I had a huge thing for mysteries when I was a child. My parents were never really the type that stopped me from reading anything. I could read whatever I wanted, really. They didn't really check my books. Um, which was great for me because 
you weren't keeping a book out of my hand. So I was, I'm really grateful to them for, you know, encouraging my love of books and taking me to the library as often as I wanted. But when I got a little bit older, when I graduated, all of the books that I've shown you guys and Harry Potter, I wanted to move on to a little more mature things. So I moved into James Patterson. I think he was my first adult author. And this is the first book I read by him. It's called First to Die. This is a women's murder club mystery. I think it follows a group of four women. Yep, four friends. And they're all, I think one is a reporter, one is a medical examiner. Oh, here it is. One's a homicide inspector. One is a medical examiner. One is an assistant DA and one works on the crime desk of the San Francisco Chronicle. And it just follows their friendship as well as, you know, a crime that's going to occur in the book. If you have a younger reader that is wanting to mature to other books, I really recommend James Patterson. Like, he doesn't write the most original storylines. I feel the more Patterson books I read, the more they started to get um, repetitive. But his chapters are extremely short enough to you know engage someone's attention for that short little minute and then they can easily put the book down but they also have a really gripping storyline kind of sucks you into the mystery i don't remember how gruesome the scenes are dealing with death that might be something to watch out for but it really didn't bother me when i was a kid the last book i have to show you guys is from one of my favorite authors and that would be Harlan Coben's Deal Breaker. Now, Deal Breaker is the first in the Myron Bolliter series. Love, love, love this series, you guys. This follows a sports agent by the name of Myron Bolliter. He is formerly a basketball player, and I believe he got an injury that prevented him from playing again. So he became a sports agent, and in each book, he's solving some sort of mystery along with his spunky assistant, Esperanza, as well as his best friend, Windsor Horn Lockwood III, better known as Wynn. I love Wynn. I need a Wynn in my life. These are hysterical, funny, they're not violent from what I remember, and really, really great for a more mature, younger reader. Um, and Myron loves Yoohoo. And he has a beat up, I think it's a Taurus. What is this car? I think it's a Ford Taurus that he uh, he dubs as a chick trawler. Yeah, I love this series. And I also love his standalones. His standalones are fantastic. Check out Harlan Coben, anybody at all. They're really great books. So those are the books that got me into reading when I was a child. I am curious to know if you guys have read any of these when you were a child or what really got you into reading. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to become part of the tribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.